Computer scientist Seth Goldstein loves to bike to his job at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh. He might ride a machine whose technology hasn't changed much in a hundred years, but he's working on a new technology that some say could change the world. It's called Claytronics, and this is the vision. Programmable matter. Billions of microscopic robots working together in a vast network to build 3D objects that can change color, that feel solid to the touch, can be molded and changed into almost anything. We call it Claytronics because sort of inspired from claymation and clay that has electronics. It'll change the way we use things and manufacture things. Instead of having to buy a pre-manufactured object, you would just download a design and the Claytronics would form into that object. I think it'll change the way we do everything, practically. The challenge of Claytronics is to develop tiny robots called Claytronic atoms, catoms for short, and to find out how to make those catoms communicate with each other to form objects. That is a big challenge. But Goldstein is not the only person who shares the vision. Today he's visiting a research lab run by Intel near the Carnegie Mellon campus. The lab's director, Todd Mowry, is the co-inventor of Claytronics. Right now there are 20 researchers working on making Claytronics a reality. Well, one of the, the key technical challenges is in, the, in the project is figuring out how to program millions or billions of processors that are all working together to accomplish something. And that's something that Intel is very interested in. To find out how CATOMs can work together, the researchers have created computer simulations so the CATOMs can interact with the forces of physics in a virtual environment. The researchers are still working on how to program the CATOMs to assemble themselves. So in certain simulations, they fall away under the simulated force of gravity to reveal a shape made up of CATOMs that have decided to stick together. They've also built experimental CATOMs that work on a flat plane to conquer the challenges of moving in a 2D world before they move into three dimensions. So we started out building larger units that would verify some of the principles that we would need in order to get to our long-range goal. And so uh, the initial idea was to essentially take cylinders and uh, put electromagnets around the cylinders and then by the two units talking to each other they would activate the right magnets and move around, sort of uh, rolling around each other. So there's no way that you can convey to your viewers what they just saw because it doesn't look like that much, but it's, it's three years of work of understanding like electromagnetism and manufacturing and repeatability and I mean these are robots that move with no moving parts. That's very cool. Magnets probably won't work too well at the microscopic scale, so the team is looking at other ways to get the catoms to stick together and move each other. Like electrostatic attraction. And replace For claytronics to work, the catoms have to be much smaller than this, sub-millimeter size in fact, but Goldstein thinks there are lots of ways to shrink them. He thinks tiny spherical machines like these can be printed flat like integrated circuits and they'll form themselves into spheres. Making tiny spheres has already happened at the Air Force Research Lab. This sphere is three times the diameter of a hair. So it sounds complicated, but in the end, there's some sort of natural simplicity to it. I mean, the units are small, they're all very similar to each other, they're doing the same thing, and there's something, some natural beauty to the fact that this system is, is made of very few simple parts. There is a pile of claytronics in my office. There's a pile of claytronics here. And the pile of electronics in my office, all the individual CATOMs have sensors, and they can create a 3D model of the room that they're in. And they transmit that model to the pile that's over here. And the model, the pile that's over here, will form into me, the same shape that I have. And the pile in my office will form into you. And so we could have this conversation. And even though we're both not located in the same place, we can physically interact, we could shake hands. For Goldstein and his colleagues, the key to the whole complex problem is making the technology simple and beautiful, sort of like a bicycle.